Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So today I have a really great project that I think you're going to love. You know, it involves barrel knots and leather and all those things that you really enjoy. But firstly, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot. So it's funny how things work out. About six weeks ago, I was mentioning to AJ in the back who does all your orders that we need to have a different kind of a desk. We need some of those desks that raise and stand because both of us are different heights. And I find it really hard to sit all day. Sometimes I would like to stand to pack orders and that sort of stuff. So I think it was the next day that I received an, an email from FlexiSpot offering to sponsor one of my videos. So they sent me one of their fabulous desks to review and I am in love. So what they sent me was their Comhar all-in-one standing desk, model number EW8M. And I am in love with this desk. It has so many great features, which I'm going to show you right now. So make sure to stick around so I can show you all about the desk and for this great new project. So one of the things that we found when we put it together is that it literally only took minutes. There's 16 different bolts and it just, I think it took a total of about 10 minutes to put together. Uh, it comes with an Allen key that, so you can easily do it yourself. I was also struck by the fact that it's actually very attractive and it's nice and compact. It's not too small. And it's, but, but it's not too large. So a lot of places um, have smaller, you know, these the new apartments and things have a smaller space in them. So this fits nicely. You could kind of tuck it in a corner and it's just the perfect size desk. The other thing that I really like is that it has a little drawer here. So it's got a drawer that you can pull out. It's got a little spot in here that you can put your pens and pencils. You could put one of your keyboards in there if you wanted just to kind of get it out of the way. So that's a really nice feature to have that drawer in there. So over here it has all of your digital readouts. It also has your uh, A ports, you have two of them, and a C port, and it has your on off button which also is like a lock. So the nice thing about this is you can um, lower it or you can raise it. So to raise it up you just simply press the button and you take it to where you want and then you just tap it again and it will stop. And if you want to lower it you just do that in reverse and then you just tap it and it stops. And it has some presets that I will show you in a second. The thing that I really like this being a grandma <laughs> is that if I have one of the girls over and they happen to run underneath here as I'm lowering it, it actually has an emergency stop on it. So nobody's going to get hurt if this is going down, which I think is a really good safety feature. One of the ways that it's benefited me is that it makes it a whole lot easier to get under my desk. I need to be nice and close so that I can stay in frame when I'm trying to do my jewelry tutorials. So I found that with my other desk, I would have to kind of jockey my chair in and it was always really uncomfortable. So this way I can raise it up to where I want and then I can take my chair and I can push it underneath really easily and I can lower it to where I need. Once I get myself positioned at my desk, I like to then lower it down. So I've done my preset at number three. So I just press the number three button and it will automatically lower it down to where I have preset it, which is at 36.0. I find this a really great height for me for being able to uh, do my jewelry tutorials. It also allows me to have really good posture and which will actually help with you know back fatigue and things like that. So that is awesome. So the other feature that I really enjoy about this desk is the ability to raise it to whatever height I need it. Now if I'm going to use this in our packing area, AJ that works for me is only five feet tall so of course she's going to want it a whole lot lower than I would. When I'm standing up, it I like to have it at a certain height. So I have pr um, preset my number four here to go to the height that I like when I'm standing up to do my v videos. So once that stops there, I find this the perfect height to be able to do my standing videos. Another nice feature is the lock button. So it'll just lock like that. And that's great if you have children so they're not messing around with things like that. So there you go. There's all the fabulous features of the Comhar all-in-one standing desk. Not only is it a great desk, but it comes with free shipping. And if you use the link that I provide below, you'll get $15 off of your purchase. I'll make sure to leave a link to their website in the description box below this video, which you can easily access. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks again so much for sponsoring my video, FlexiSpot. And now let's get on to the project for today. All right, so to make our piece today, I have 28 inches of two millimeter uh, round leather, and this is in our antique brown. 
and I'm going to be using some balled up head pins and I've got a few different sizes of jump rings and I have a closed ring and a lobster clasp and I'm also going to be using a couple different um, Tierra cast parts. I've got one of their little charms, this decorative ring and a little connector and then I'm going to be using some uh, crimp pins that you crimp in the middle and I also have a couple little uh, Chinese faceted glass and for our tools I'm going to be using a pair of cutters, a pair of pliers, round nose pliers and bent chain nose pliers. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is create our pendant. So I'm going to take one of our head pins and put the Chinese glass on top of it and I want to, I don't want to have much of a neck on this but I do find that these are really hard to bend. They're a fairly heavy gauge so I'm just going to take my pliers and put them right down at the very end and bend away. So instead of just bending on the actual bead itself, I'm just going to bend with my pliers. And now I'm going to just make a small loop. So I'm going towards the end of my pliers and I'm going to go up and over and down, open those pliers and rotate them so that they're parallel to the table and pull that straight to the back. And then I want to take that and kind of just rotate it until it becomes something that looks like that. Now I want to take my pliers and place them right over top and this is where your uh, bent chain nose come in handy and you always want to take the tip of the plier and the tip of the wire and you're just going to wrap them around. So this is kind of a bulky wire so we still end up with a bit more of that bulky look that's so trendy right now but it gives me a little bit more control. Because we are close to a glass bead we don't want to get too tight in there because it could crack it. So now I'm going to take the flush part of my cutters and place them down and give that a little snip and then now we're going to have a little burr there but we do have to be careful because this is a glass bead so I'm just going to gently push it down. I'm not going very hard because I don't want to um, crack that bead. So we've got our one little dangle and I'm going to repeat on the green one. So I'm just going to take my pliers. Now sometimes people don't have pliers that have a really uh, sharp end. I wish that I could get these. I've had these for like 18 years, 19 years, something like that and I just can't find them again but these have a really nice sharp end. If you don't have a pair of pliers like that you can use your round nose pliers and you can just take those and go to the very end and bend away and it'll give you about the same distance. So now I'm going to go up and over and down and rotate and pull that straight to the back until I create my little loop and now I'm going to wrap that around. So you can wrap that with your hand but you can see that it's a lot harder for me and really about the best on this is to go about two and a half wraps around but I do want to make sure that that goes off to the back like that. So give that a little snip. Just trying to leave enough room so that when I press that burr down I'm not um, getting too close to that glass bead. So be very careful when you do press that in there just be you know mindful that we are working with glass beads. So the first thing I'm going to do is take one of our small jump rings. So I have this is a four millimeter 18 gauge so I'm going to open this one up and I'm just going to bend this way. You never want to bend your jump rings that way and then I'm going to decide which side that I want to put this little charm on. So it has two different sides. You can go for the little more floral side or you can go for this side. I I think I'm going to go with the floral side today. I kind of like that look. So now I'm just going to do that up. Just make sure that you jiggle it back and forth until you get it to the place that you're happy with and make sure it's nice and snug. And now I'm going to take one of these jump rings and this is a six millimeter 18 gauge and I'm going to open that up and I'm going to place one of my little dangles that I made on there and then I'm going to run it through that jump ring and then I'm going to take another dangle and put it on the other side and I'm going to do that up. And again just jiggle it until you get it where you want it. And now I'm going to take another one of my six millimeter jump rings, open that up and I'm going to put it through the top of the jump ring making sure that I have a charm on either side and I'm going to put that through my little connector. So now this has multiple different ways that you can put it. It, there is no right or wrong. I kind of just like it going this way I think. Yeah this way here so they've got the little swirl at the top but you know it's your piece you can do whatever you like. So that's the nice thing about this one is that it's a little bit more customizable and that you can turn most of these pieces around. And now I need a heavier jump ring because I need something that's going to fit over this. 
So this one's a really large gauge. I think this one is more like a 16 gauge and it's about eight on the outside of this one. So I'm gonna run that through the top there. And again, this you can decide which side you want it on. I want the little bit busier side there. So I'm gonna do that up and just kind of click it. So now we've created our little pendant. And I actually forgot that one of the, the uh, tools that I'm gonna be using today is our barrel knot tube. How could I leave that behind? I always use those. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold my leather in half by meeting up the two ends, and then I'm going to come down to the middle. I'm just gonna go off just ever so slightly off center. So there's my center, and I'm just gonna kind of grab just over a little bit, and that's where I'm gonna make a barrel knot. So I'm gonna take my tube and place it on top of my leather, and I'm gonna bring that to the back, and I'm gonna wrap around three times, working towards my left hand. And then I'm gonna take the one that I was wrapping with and go through the back part of that tube. And we do sell these tubes on my website. I'll make sure to put a link below. That's probably the most asked question that I get, is do you sell those? And if you buy this kit, you will get one with it. So now I'm just gonna sort of jockey that into position by sort of a push and pull movement. I just wanna make sure that none of these are overlapping and I don't want to move that too much up or down because I do need that to sort of stay somewhat in the middle. So now if we marry up our ends and then go down to the middle, you can see that that's off a little bit, but now we're going to be matching that up by making one on the other side. So I'm going to leave just a little gap, maybe about a half an inch there, and I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to take my barrel knot tube, bring mine around to the back and wrap three times. So it's a total of three making sure that we leave that little bit of a gap because that's going to be our sort of a leather bale of sorts. And I'm gonna pull that through. And now I wanna make sure that I keep that. So I'm going to put my, I'm gonna pull that up a little bit because I need a little bit more. And then what, that I'm, what I like to do is I take my thumbnail and place it there. And then when I'm pushing my knot into place, I know that it's not gonna go any further than my nail. So now that we've created our two little knots, that's gonna give us kind of a bail effect. So now I'm gonna take another one of our largest jump rings that we have, and I'm gonna open that up. So just twist away, run that through the top, and then I'm gonna put it through the center there. And then you just wanna do that up, make sure it's nice and snug. So now I wanna marry those two up so that they're across from each other, and then I'm just gonna run down the ends, and I just wanna even those out so that we have approximately the same length. So now this is at the point where you get to decide how long you want this. This one does look a little bit nicer when it's a bit shorter because it looks good when it's laying against the, um, the chest. But if you wanted to wear it a little longer, you've got a little bit of extra length here. So I can't really tell you how long to make this. It depends on your um, neck size and where you like to wear your necklaces. Okay, so now we're gonna put our little um, crimps on the end. Now, this is a two millimeter leather and I do have a two millimeter crimp, but I find that sometimes they're a little hard to get in there. So I went with a little larger size. Plus I wanted something that had a little bit more oomph to it. So I wanna sort of follow the, the curve of the natural leather here. So that's kind of, it kind of curves this way. So I wanna make sure that when I put my cord end on that I'm not going sideways because it'll just kind of, you know, fight with the natural curve of the leather. So I. Just get it on there. I pull back so that you can't see the leather up the top there anymore. And then I give it a crimp down. And then I turn it and repeat on the other side. And you're just gonna do that a couple times. You don't wanna over crimp. And that's how you put those on. So now I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So that's the natural way. So I want to make sure that it's this direction. Like I don't wanna have it like that. And then it will lay nicely on your neck. So I get it in position. Now I'm just crimping right in between there, not on either side there, just in the middle, because that's the soft part of these. So I, I pull back just before I crimp so that we don't see any leather. And if you don't have a pair of sharp ones like this, you can always use your bent chain nose pliers. Those go in there really nicely. So then I don't have to go back and forth so many times. So that's a nice little tip. We're gonna put on our clasp. So I wanna make sure that I put it in the hand that I'm dominant in. So I, most people are right-handed. If you're a left-handed person, then just switch around what I'm doing. But what I'm gonna do is take my pendant and sort of flop it down and that's the way that it would sit on my chest. So I know that that's gonna be the part that I'm gonna put my clasp on. So that's the right-hand side. So I'm gonna take one of my small jump rings and these ones just happen to be linked together. So I'm going to unlink them. 
And so I'm going to put that through and then I'm going to put my lobster clasp on and then I'm going to do it up. And you want to make sure that this is a really good solid close because this is the side that's going to take all the punishment. And then I'm going to repeat on the other side, but instead of a lobster clasp, I'm going to use a closed ring. I always like to use a closed ring so that it's nice and stable. If you don't buy a kit and you wanted to make something like this yourself, you could always just cut a piece of chain and use just a, a link off of a larger chain too if you don't have any closed rings. So I'm going to do that up. So I'm just going to clasp this together and then I'm going to show you the completed piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, leave me a comment because I love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. As always, everything that I use in my videos are available on my website at www.kellysbeeboutique.com. Make sure you spell Kelly with an IE. There will also be a link provided below to the kit and there'll be a link below to the FlexiSpot Come Hard Desk. So I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.